the L-20E Alpha class was supposed to be the next generation of German battleships after the Bayern class, placing them roughly in a similar position to the Revenge class compared to the Queen Elizabeth class. However, unlike the Revenge class, which was supposed to be a cheaper and more easily mass-produced derivation of the fast but expensive Queen Elizabeths, the new German ships were supposed to improve over the Bayerns and thus also be superior to the two British 15-inch armed classes. As the Bayerns were to be built in two pairs, with the latter pair, Sachsen and Württemberg, being somewhat improved versions, the succeeding ships would not begin construction until 1916. At least, that was the plan. To ensure superiority of firepower, the first design sketches looked at ships with either 10 or 12 guns of the same 15-inch calibre as the Bayerns, using either twin or quad turrets, the work in France on the Normandies having not gone unnoticed, and the German love with the twin turret finally meeting its match in the prospect of a Wyoming-style turret farm only with 15-inch weapons. These initial designs went nowhere due to the outbreak of the war, but by 1916, with the realisation that the war was going to last a fair bit longer than had been anticipated, new designs, now called L1, L2 and L3, were brought forward in parallel with GK1, GK2 and GK3, which were designs for battlecruisers. The GK standing for Große Kreuzer, or Large Cruiser, the German designation for such ships at the time. Work on the prospective battlecruisers took priority, but once that had been done, the weapons fits for the battleships were, that were considered were either 8 420mm or 16.5 inch guns, 10 15 inch guns, or 8 15 inch guns. The reason for the repeat by urn armament was that the other ships would be able to make 22 knots, but it was calculated that the last option could make 25 knots, effectively trading armament for speed. At this point, all of them were armed with twin turrets, although a background argument was still being had to skip triples and go straight for quads. These designs were then designated L-20B, L-21B, and L-22C for further development. Of these, the L-20B design, with its larger guns, was preferred, and two sub-variants were prepared, L-20E and L-24. This was because after Jutland, Admiral Scheer wanted the biggest guns possible this being the main lesson that the Germans had taken from the encounter. L-24 was a little bit larger and a little bit faster, and both would continue to be developed into the L-20E Alpha and L-24E Alpha designs. Both designs had fewer secondary guns than previously, 12 each for a broadside of 6. The larger ship carried an extra pair of torpedo tubes, but armour was effectively the Bayern scheme slightly rearranged. However, the Kaiser was looking at the trend that had been started by the Queen Elizabeths and the Bayerns and wanted to combine battleships and battlecruisers into a single type, what we would call a fast battleship, and neither design was fast enough for his liking. Ideally, he wanted 30 knots. Trying to find the weight-saving measures needed to accomplish this, refining the ship's battery into three triples for nine guns or two quads for the original eight guns, and then reallocating the saved weight and space into engines, was considered, but ultimately it just wasn't possible to meet the speed requirement, and two slightly modified versions of the previous designs were suggested. The first was basically L20E Alpha again, only now at 26 knots, whilst the other was two knots faster, at the expense of one forward superfiring turret. These would be paired with new battlecruisers, with an attempt at a single unified design put off for the next class, on which some work would continue up until the end of the war. With two months of World War I left, albeit that they didn't know that yet, the L-20E Alpha was selected as the next German battleship class. Displacement was to be just under 45,000 tonnes, around the same as the later Bismarcks, as this was the normal, not the later treaty-mandated standard displacement, with a mixture of oil and coal-fired boilers providing 100,000 shaft horsepower to four screws for the aforementioned speed of 26 knots, or the speed limit in the typical urban environment in Europe. The 420mm, or 16.5-inch main battery, was arranged in four twin turrets with a pair super-firing forward, but the aft pair staggered, similar to HMS Tiger or the Japanese Kongos, due to the presence of the additional machinery spaces that were needed to move the ship up to its target speed. 
Like contemporary American designs, the secondary battery was moved up out of the hull and into the superstructure, and consisted of a dozen of the standard German 5.9-inch single casement-mounted guns. An anti-aircraft battery of eight guns mounted in pairs at the four corners of the main superstructure of the ship was also included, although whether these would be the standard German 88mm or a new 105mm designed gun had not been determined at the time that the final sketches were prepared. Finally, three submerged torpedo tubes, one forward and one on each side, would also be carried. Armour was, as mentioned, similar to the Bayerns at 350mm or 13.8 inches thick, with a maximum thickness of 120mm or 4.7 inches. It should come as relatively little surprise that with the decision to proceed only actually occurring in September 1918, the ships were never actually ordered or laid down. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.